In today's recording, we're going to look at some of the new rebate management features. Rebate management became a module within Dynamics 365 Finance and Supply Chain Management in version 32, and in version 36, it was made mandatory to be turned on. Today, let's look at the rebate management posting profile. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to call this Artinian for the name of a customer. What we're going to do today is look at what happens if you have a scenario where you have a number of child customers, but the rebate all goes to the head office. So in this case, I'm going to make my module customer. You can see it's customer or vendor. Under type, it can be rebate or royalty. And my payment type, I'm going to say pay using accounts payable. In this case, I've tied the parent or the head office customer to a vendor of the same name. We have the provision section. Provisions are just accruals. They're what happens when you have a rebate that spans a long period of time, but you want to post accruals and expenses on a, a shorter period of time basis. And so I'm going to book my accrual to my rebates accrual account. And for that, I'm going to go ahead and use my rebate provision journal. And then in the management, which is the actual rebate that you post, I'm going to choose customer or vendor. And here the account source is our critical field. You have fixed account, which is what we're going to use today, where you have one customer that's getting their rebate. The deal line account is the more traditional rebate, meaning whoever you specify in the rebate agreement. And the sold to customer, which is who was the customer I sold to as opposed to invoice to. So in this case, I'm going to pick fixed account and I'm going to choose Artinian. And I'm going to choose my parent. My name of my journal will be an AP journal and I'm going to use my rebate AP. And now this functionality is available intercompany, but I'm going to go ahead and just do it for one. And so that's my rebate expense. So that is the setup of the posting profile. Now we're going to go set up the rebate deal. This used to be called rebate agreement in the prior versions, and now it's called the deal. So I'm going to create a new one, and I will call this the Martinian head office. My type is rebate. My post date profile is going to be Artinian. And my rebate output is going to be financial. In a later video, I'll cover item where instead of getting a cash back, you get a free item. And I'm going to make my currency USD, and then I'll hit OK. Let me go ahead and open this up. And so now we're going to add lines, and this is much the same as it was before. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say under account code, I'm going to choose group. And here I'm going to choose a group I've already created called Artinian. And what you'll see here is that if I drill into this group and I look at customers, I'll see my two children customers. You can assign these either at the group level or you can go to individual customers and assign them to groups. Better than what it used to be, you can now assign a customer to more than one group as well. My item relation, I'm just going to run this for one item for now. Of course, you can do this for all items or a group of items. Down here below, we have our calculation method. So there are four calculation methods. I recommend looking into these as they do cause for different amounts. We're just going to use step, which I will explain in a minute. I'm going to say that it's a value based rebate rather than a uh, quantity based rebate. And it's going to be based on what we invoice, not what we order. And then over here, we have a few calculation features, which are very cool. So the ones I like paid invoices only, meaning now rebates will only be on invoices that the customer actually pays, not simply what you've invoiced. Discounted amount, which I will check, means the rebate will be on the net amount of the order, not the gross amount. So if they do have a line discount, that reduction amount will also reduce the rebate. You can say include credit notes to ensure that any returns are removed from rebate calculations, meaning it reduces the rebate. Free text invoice. This include settlement is quite useful. This will reduce the rebate based on early paid discount if the customer takes it. Of course, that only matters if they use the paid invoice only option. For my dates, I'm going to say that this is from 01, or sorry, 0201 2024 all the way to 331 2024. The accumulate by is over what period of orders do we need to consider for one set of calculations? So I'm going to set this to one month. And then my claims by can be how often does the customer actually get the rebate? 
So it can be something like if they're only paid out once every year, I could set this to one year. For ease of calculation, I'm going to set this up for one month as well. And then finally, let's get to lines. And I'm going to say from one to a thousand dollars, you get a one percent discount, and over a thousand and one, you get a two percent discount. Now this is where two different things come into play. First, the accumulate by, which was every month. That means that I have one month worth of orders to hit this $1,001 threshold, meaning if it takes me seven orders, but they're all in the same month, if I cross that $1,001 uh, threshold, I start getting the 2% off. Also, the stepped calculation means that it is based on what tier you're on. So for the first $1,000, you're going to get 1%. For anything over $1,001, you're going to get 2%. For example, if you were to use cumulative, it would mean that if my total sales for the month were over 1,001, the entirety of my sales would get the 2%. So those are your different options that you have available to you. Now I'm gonna submit this into workflow. One of the things with this new rebate management feature is that you have to get these approved no matter what. Now in my case, the workflow is just set to auto approve, but you cannot have this work without workflow. If you disable it, it will forever stay in an inactive status. So let me go ahead and refresh, and it's just taking a minute to run through the workflow engine, but as soon as it does, you will see that this will become active. Okay, now that this is active, let's go ahead and issue a couple sales orders. So first, I'm going to go into all sales orders, and I'm going to go ahead and sell to my Tinian Missouri branch. And I'll put that in here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'll say my item 1000. I'm going to sell two at 300 a piece. And so that is $600. Now, one of the things that we have available to us, if you have your price information uh, enabled within the AR parameters, this price details button will be down here. And if I click on that, you can see under rebate management, no, not under rebates, which is where it used to be in the older version. You'll see the rebate deal that would be relevant to this. And so I'm going to go ahead now and I will ship this. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to invoice. All right, and then we're going to do one more order, and this time we'll do it for the other customer. So I'm going to go out and I'm going to open up one more order, and this one will be to my Oregon branch, same warehouse I'm shipping out of. This time, let's add in a little bit more flavor. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say three, 300, but I'm also going to give myself a 10% discount. So once again, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ship this. And then we're going to invoice this. OK, so now that we have our two orders, we're going to go ahead and look at the next steps. So I'm going to go back and do this directly from my one deal. You would typically do this for all your various deals, but you don't have to. So I'm going to go into my Artinian deal and I'm going to go ahead and process my provision. Now note, you do not have to do this. A provision is only an accrual, and that only matters if your accrual is more frequent than the actual rebate payout claim, which typically would be the case. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna run this for the month of February. And then if we look at transactions, we'll see that we've created an $18.2 rebate. And where did that $18.2 come from? Well, we had in total, if we look at our source transactions, we had $600 and we had $810. So remember our first thousand was 1%, so that would be $10. And then on top of that, we had another 410 and 2%, which would be 82, or sorry, 8.2 for a total of $18.20. And so that is my provision. And now what I can do is I can go into my rebate now, 
part of this can be auto posted, but I've set it up to not do that so that we can demonstrate. And if I look in here and I'm going to go into my rebate deal 19, I can go ahead and select both of these and I can post them. Sorry, that would be over here. And I'll say my posting date is the end of the month. And posting this is a matter of posting the rebate, but not actually the GL entry. So if we look at our rebate management, you'll see posted, but document posted is no. And so what does that do? That means if we now go into our GL and I go into my general journals, we'll see my rebate provision here. And what we'll see is this is for my 18.2. We're crediting my accrual account. We're debiting my expense. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to post that. Now, the next step, and again, a lot of this can be automated. The next step would be to actually process the payment to the vendor, which is associated to the head office customer. So I'm going to go in here now and I'm going to go process and I'm going to process the rebate. And once again, I'm going to do 21 to 229. And if we look at my transactions, we'll see now we have this, which is my rebate for $18. The transaction type here is rebate. If we look at posted, we have our provision. And let's actually just go to all to get a view. And now again, in this case, it's kind of meaningless to do a provision because I'm paying out as frequently as I am accruing but it gives you the sense of what the functionality can do. So now I'm gonna go back and again, I'm gonna look up my 19 and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to post this. And again, I'm gonna give it the same date. And those are gone. And so now if I go to my AP invoice journal, we'll see here is my rebate ap invoice and you'll see this vendor which is my artinian parent now remember this artinian parent vendor is tied to the customer in that vendor relationship field and so as a result we are going to have an 18 dollar payable to said vendor which is the head office and with that we're complete and whenever we do our next check run by the way this is a net 30 terms whenever we do our next check run we will pay the head office and cut them a check. Now, remember within our rebate posting profile, and let me go back to that. It did not need to be in this. You did not have to choose pay using accounts payable. You can, of course, simply give them a customer deduction. But in my case, I wanted to show the full AP process. Hopefully you found this video beneficial.